When Jesus walked the earth, the first message that he preached when he began his ministry was to repent and believe the gospel. When we as believers in Jesus Christ follow any other teaching, philosophy, or doctrine, we are being led astray from the truth, led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ, and being led astray to serve the devil's world, which is the kingdom of darkness. In the end, according to the word of truth, this is not the side that we are going to want to be on. Revelation 12 verse 9 declares, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. God's word and his truth will prevail. No other teaching, philosophy, or doctrine will be able to overcome what God has declared to be right. And God's greatest creation, mankind, will be able to live with him forever in his great kingdom, providing we make the right choice to follow his doctrine and not the dangerous doctrines of the world. Now, this same Bible, this Bible that contains all of these scriptures that were breathed out by God, also clarifies in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, saying, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So people will have the purity of the truth of God at their disposal, but there will be some who will choose to attach themselves to information that comes from sources that are related to demonic activity. That's what the Bible means when it says some will devote themselves to teaching of demons. Think about it. Even the Bible teaches that the devil himself is the ruler of the world in which we live. John 8, explains that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and that he has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. However, society in many cases has chosen to follow after principles associated with the teachings of demons instead of adhering to the source which we know to be the truth the Word of God. And let me clarify something. Teachings of demons are not what many think them to be. They are not necessarily related to overt evil, but it's more of a subtle, deceptive evil. The teachings or doctrines of demons will tell you things like, you can sin as much as you want because God's grace is unlimited and His mercy endures forever. The teachings or doctrines of demons will encourage you to live for yourself, take care of yourself, and build wealth. But in both of those examples, there is only a little bit of truth mixed in with lies. What those examples don't tell you is that, yes, God has given us grace and His mercy endures forever, but God is not mocked because whatever a person sows, they will also reap. And on the second example, God does want to take care of you and see you prosper. But prosperity is not always monetary. A person can prosper financially, but be dead spiritually. And I believe it's always better to be rich in Christ, to be rich spiritually than materially, because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? So as Christians, we really should not be surprised that people are turning away from the truth at such alarming rates. But we should also realize that we cannot just lay down and watch it happen. I want you to listen to what 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2-4 to says, because in his instruction to Timothy, the Apostle Paul intensely stated, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Paul needed his son in the faith to understand that his responsibility was to stand firmly on the word of God because it was the truth. 
He needed him to understand that when others were turning away to doctrines of demons, he still needed to be teaching and preaching the truth. He needed him to understand that when people began to look for teachers that would cater to their feelings and avoid the truth, that he needed to continue to give them what they needed and not what they wanted. Paul needed Timothy to understand that no matter what things looked like all around him, that he simply must continue in the words and doctrines that he had been instructed in and not in the doctrines that were leading people astray. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, also stated, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Paul knew there was only one truth, and he also knew his enemy, the devil, wanted to pervert that truth to keep people from being in right relationship with God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the truth we need to hold on to. Salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ and there is no other name under heaven that can bring salvation to mankind. There is only one God and only one mediator between God and man and his name is Jesus Christ. I find it interesting that the Bible uses the words, take heed. To take heed is to pay special attention. To take heed is to add an extra level of consideration than you would normally. I would like to submit to you this short passage of scripture, Mark chapter 13, verse 28 to 33. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near, at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. We are to pay special attention when it comes to the return of Jesus. And how does one take heed, you may ask? Well, the Bible says, take heed, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Saints, let me ask you a question. Are you watching? Are you praying? Are you observing that the Bible says in the last days perilous times shall come? The word perilous means full of danger or full of risk. So that means we should be observing for the days when there is danger in this world. Danger when it comes to our health as humans danger or risk when it comes to economy, danger or risk when it comes to nature itself. Perilous times shall come, and in context to our two key words, we are to take heed. This parable given to us by Jesus is meant to serve as a warning to all of us his return is near, at the doors. And so my message to you is, take heed 
because 2 Timothy chapter 4 tells us that a time will come when some will no longer tolerate sound teaching. They will no longer tolerate godly teaching. They will not be able to stand to hear the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. The pure, undiluted, unadulterated gospel of truth. A gospel that preaches repentance. So men will reject this sound teaching and instead they will live by their own desires. They'll scratch their itching ears by surrounding themselves with teachers who approve of their lifestyles and tell them what they want to hear. Take heed, man of God. Take heed, woman of God. Do not fall into the trap of listening to a gospel that approves your sinful lifestyle. In 2 Chronicles 16, there is an interesting story that we can all learn from. There is a king named Asa who initially started well in his walk with God. Initially, Asa was a king who worked to remove idolatry among his people and lead the land to worship and honor the one true God, Jehovah. But King Asa's story takes a turn when he decides to put his trust in man instead of God. When faced with an obstacle, this king deviated from his faith and sought to seek help from people instead of the Lord. Here is what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 7 to 9. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram, Syria, and did not rely on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram, Syria, has escaped out of your hand. Were not the Ethiopians and Lubim a huge army with a great number of chariots and horsemen? Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he placed them in your hand. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, so that he may support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly, in this. Therefore, from now on, you will have wars. Now from this story of King Asa, we don't want to focus too much on this king and what he did, but rather, I want to highlight what the prophet of God, Hanani, said to King Asa. He said the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth so that he may support those whose heart is completely his. This is what we should remember as children of God. The eyes of the Lord are seeking those who are fully committed in him, those who are fully trusting in him. And so, dear friend, when you face obstacles in life, don't put your trust in people. Trust in God. Don't rely on people or things. Trust in God Almighty because He is seeking. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, just looking for the person who is fully committed and confident in Him. Ephesians 6 verse 13 says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I would like to take a moment to deconstruct this verse and what it means to us as children of God. The Bible says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. The first thing to notice is that this is an instruction we're told to take up the whole armor of God. It's not a question of whether you can or cannot take this up. No, it's clear instruction. This is something you need to do. 
The second thing is, you only need armor if you are in a war. You only need armor in battle. You only need armor when there is an opposing force coming against you. And when the Bible says the whole armor, this says to me that there are multiple parts that need to be taken up. Anything than the whole armor would leave you vulnerable. So it's important we follow this instruction and not only take up parts of the armor, but the whole armor of God. Now, the second part of this verse says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. This statement has a level of certainty to it. You need to take up the whole armor of God so that you can withstand in the evil day. Now, in this part of the verse, I get the impression that the Bible is warning us. The Bible's warning us that there will be an evil day, a day when we'll have to fight the forces of evil. And the forces of evil can attack in many forms. However, if we are wearing the whole armor of God, then we will be able to withstand anything the devil aims in our direction. Now that we have a better understanding of this verse, I want to encourage you and rally you up. Yes, you are in a war. If you are a true disciple of Christ, you will be at war. You will be at war against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, in these few moments, I want to remind you that the word is central to your defense stance, as well as your offensive stance as a Christian. So when you face the evil day, remember 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. When you face the evil day, remember Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. When you face that evil day, Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So be encouraged, child of God. Do not fear when evil comes against you. The Lord is with you, and the promises of God should give you the confidence to be bold in the face of evil. How do you focus on God instead of the obstacles of life? It's a valid question, right? We all have obstacles in this life. We will all come face to face with things that will threaten our faith in the Lord. We'll come up against opposition that may paralyze even the most courageous hearts with fear. But you see over and over again in the Bible, we're told not to worry. We're told not to fear, not to be dismayed, not to be discouraged, but instead to look to the Lord as your deliverer. Look to the Lord as your rescuer. Look to the Lord as your help and source of strength. 